So I think this is a situation everybody knows from the office environment, experiences it every, every week. This, this is a very productive meeting going on here. And uh, of course the foundation for this is efficient communication. And uh, one requirement for efficient communication to happen is cooperative behavior um, of the participants of the communication. And the same thing is true um, when we uh, look at um, a bus system in a vehicle. And uh, for 10 base T1S, there is a mechanism um, called a PLCA, a physical layer collision avoidance, um, that does uh, this job to ensure cooperative behavior of the nodes on the bus. So and now we will look a little bit at this mechanism and how it works. So here we see a three node, or no, it's, it's actually an end node system, but the three nodes are displayed here uh, on this slide. There is a node uh, zero, node one, and uh, a node n. And uh, you see the different uh, layers we have here for the nodes. The lower three layers, uh, they comprise the phi. And the phi consists of the PLCA layer, the physical layer collision avoidance layer, the physical coding sublayer, and the physical medium attachment. And uh, when we look uh, at the PLCA layer, you can see that um, it has a chip-to-chip -chip interface to the media access control, to the MAC. And this could, for example, be an MII interface. And then it also has an MII interface to the physical coding sublayer. So this will be important uh, on, on, the next, uh, on the next slides. So at the bottom, we see a so-called uh, transmission cycle. And a transmission cycle is started uh, by a beacon. And uh, there is one special node in a 10 base T1S system. This is the master node. And the master node, um, the job of the master node is to send out a beacon to start a transmission cycle. And the beacon is uh, used by the nodes in the network um, to synchronize. And after the beacon is sent, <coughs> we have transmit opportunities for all the nodes on the bus. And the first transmit opportunity uh, goes to uh, the master node itself. So in this case, let's assume here the node zero is the master node, sends out a beacon, and the master node also uses its transmit opportunity to transmit some data. After one ethernet frame is sent over the bus, we have to transmit opportunity for node one here in the middle. And uh, here in this case, the node one uh, doesn't have any data to be sent over the bus. So the node one yields its transmit opportunity um, so that the node two on the network um, can, uh, can proceed with its uh, transmit opportunity. <coughs> And this procedure continues until each node uh, on the bus had um, at least one transmit opportunity. And then, <clears throat> and then uh, a new transmission cycle is started uh, by the master sending out another beacon. Okay, so um, now we look more closely at the PLCA um, sublayer, the reconciliation sublayer. And uh, you see here, now for this discussion, we assume that we have an MRI interface at the top um, of this PLCA layer and at the bottom. And here you can see the different signals of the MRI. So we have a receive clock, we have receive data, we have uh, receive data valid and receive error. And then we have a collision line and a carrier sense line. Then we have a transmission clock transmission data, uh, four lines, then a transmit enable, and then um, a transmit error. And um, in the table here on the, on the left-hand side, at the top table, you can see what kind of signal combination can appear at the different, um, or can appear here at uh, the TX side of the MII, and what this actually means. Yeah, for example, if we have uh, transmit enable one and we have a transmit error zero and uh, we have a, a data value here from zero, zero, 
zero zero to one 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 one, then we have a normal data transmission, for example. And um, there are not all combinations used, so we have some reserved combinations. So if we have transmit enable here zero, transmit error one, and we have something between zero zero one zero and one 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 one, this is reserved here. <coughs> When we look at the bottom, we again have the same MRI interface, but now we take two combinations away from the reserved area and uh, give them basically uh, some meaning. Yeah? So we say here zero, 01 for transmit enable zero, transmit error one, zero, zero, 0010 zero for data lines, this actually means beacon. So when the master wants to send out a beacon, this is the combination that will be here at the transmit line to, indi to indicate a beacon to uh, the physical coding sublayer. And in a similar fashion, if we have a 01 and then have a 0011, this is a commit. And uh, with a commit, a node um, actually says, yes, I want to use my transmit opportunity. And then, of course, we have uh, still some reserved uh, combinations remaining, um, but we have used two of them to, to indicate beacon and commit to the physical coding sublayer. So now we look into the uh, PLCA box. So I'd, I have put a, a, a red box here uh, around the PLCA uh, layer so that we know what, what we are talking about. So we have in the PLCA layer, we have basically three building blocks. There is the um, PLCA command detect. So again, of course, we have here the MII at the top and we have the MII at the bottom here. So what the PLCA command detect block does is it observes the receiving lines of the, MI, of the lower MII and um, basically detects whether we um, see here um, a beacon from, uh, from the master node, if we see a comet from another node uh, on the network, or we have no command. And this information is given to the next block here in the middle, the PLCA con uh, control finite state machine. And um, the um, PLCA control finite state machine um, has the job to drive the uh, TX signals here of the lower MII. So when the node is a master node, um, then the PLCA control finite state machine is responsible for sending or indicating the beacon to the uh, physical coding sublayer. So then uh, it will drive here, uh, as you can see here, these three lines, uh, uh, transmit data, transmit enable, and transmit error. In order to do this, uh, this block uses um, basically Two inputs. This is uh, uh, first here uh, the carrier sense line uh, from uh, the lower layer MII and uh, a packet pending variable that is set by the PLCA data finite state machine. And um, of course, the carrier sense here at the bottom, um, this is used by the lower layers to indicate to the upper layers that we have some activity on the bus. The packet pending variable is uh, set by the PLCA data finite state machine, and this is used to indicate to the control finite state machine that uh, some data is ready to be sent over the bus. So when some data is coming here through the upper MII, here, so from when we look at the node here, it's coming down here through the upper MII, then the PLCA data finite state machine recognizes this and indicates to the control finite state machine, I have data that needs to be sent over the bus. Okay, then we have the last building block here, the third building block. This is the data finite state machine, and the data state machine basically does two things. Um, <clears throat> the first thing is it drives the carrier sense and uh, the uh, collision line to the upper MII. So basically the, the MAC layer of the node doesn't know anything about uh, PLCA. And um, we will see this on the uh, following slides, how this works. So the PLCA data finite state machine is, is responsible to drive these two lines. 
so that the upper layer doesn't know anything about PLCA. Um, the second uh, responsibility of this block is to buffer some data that is coming through uh, the upper MII. So uh, when the Mac wants to send some data to the bus, um, we need to wait until the transmit opportunity for the node is there. And um, in order to wait for this uh, transmit opportunity to be there, data is stored in a FIFO buffer. So we will see this in a second. So in order to give you a little bit of more dynamic um, impression of what's going on in a 10 base t one s system, um, we have implemented a small simulation um, in system C. System C is a C++ library, and it also comes with a, with a simulator. And um, here in this implementation, um, we focus basically here on the PLCA layer, so the, no, there's not much functionality there with respect to the MAC or uh, with respect to the lower layers, but I think it's sufficient uh, so that you see what's going on. So when you look here at the system at the bottom, we have here uh, five nodes, node zero to node four, and of course, each of the PLCA layers of these nodes, they have these state machines. So basically here in this setup, we have already um, 10 state machines communicating with each other. And um, we, we now look here, we, we will now look at some signals um, of a simulation. And of course, we cannot show all the signals. We need to uh, do an uh, extraction here. So what we see here is um, uh, clock for the MII interface. This is for all uh, nodes the same. Here in this case it's for the node zero. And then we see some signals of the upper MII of node zero. So that's why I put here a box around this, uh, this PLCA layer because we see signals from the upper MII, we see um, the state of the state machines, and we see signals from the lower MII. So at the top we see here um, transmit enable um, from the upper MII, we see the four data lines, and we see the collision line, and we see the carrier sense line um, from the PLCA to the MAC. Then we see the state of the state machines here for node zero, the control finite state machine and the data finite state machine, and then we see three signals of the lower MII of node zero. So here we have transmit enable of the lower MII, we have transmit error, and we have the four data lines of the lower MII. Um, then here at the bottom, we see signals for node two. So here I didn't put a, a red uh, box around this uh, PLCA layer bec um, because we don't see anything from the upper MII. We only see the state of the state machines, again, control finite state machine, data finite state machine, and here we see the receive lines of the, uh, of the lower MII. Okay, so, and now we want to send some data, and we will see what's, what's going on. So when the whole uh, process starts, um, by the way, the node zero is here, the master node, this is what we assume. So um, the first thing that happens is then the master node observes uh, the bus, and um, if we have, uh, for a sufficiently long time, uh, no activity on the bus, it sends out a beacon. So basically it waits, observes the bus. This is called recovery state. If there is no activity on the bus, then it starts synchronization by sending out a beacon. So here you can see the control finite state machine here is in a send beacon state, and the beacon is sent out. If you remember the combinations from one of the previous slides, a beacon is on the transmit line it's uh, transmit enable zero, transmit error one, and then we have on the data line a zero, zero, one, zero, a two. Of course, this beacon is received by node two. So that we see here on the receive lines, we have uh, receive data valid zero, receive error one, and again a two on the data line. So now we have the beacon, and now all the nodes here on the network, they look at the receive lines, and uh, the moment the beacon disappears, so basically the master at some point stops sending the beacon, 
And at this point, the synchronization happens. So everybody looks at the receiving lines. At some point, the beacon disappears. And then they say, OK, now um, we are synchronized. And then the, the master node receives its transmit opportunity. So the first node has now the opportunity to send some data. When we look here at the MII interface of node zero, so here the upper MII, you can see here is the transmit opportunity for node zero. Um, there is no data that is to be sent. So node zero has nothing to send. And what the node zero does, it says, OK, I don't need anything to send. I don't have anything. I yield my transmit opportunity. Um, then we have the transmit opportunity for node one. And um, as no data is re received, uh, node one also yields its transmit um, opportunity. Then there is transmit opportunity for node two. You can see it here. Here it has a yield state in the control finance state machine, so it says I don't have anything to send. I yield my transmit opportunity. Then we have the transmit opportunity for node three and four. And then another transmission cycle starts by the master node sending out a beacon. Um, we see here the beacon. Here the beacon is again sent out by the master node. However, what happened in the meantime is that some data came through the upper MRI. So as I said, now node, node zero has basically um, yielded its transmit opportunity. In the meantime, some data came through the upper MRI from the MAC to the PLCA layer. And um, what happens now is that the data that is coming through the upper MRI is stored in a FIFO queue, and we wait until the next transmit opportunity for node zero is there. <clears throat> so the uh, data finite state machine se sets carrier sends to one, and here now the data is coming through through the upper MRI here, and is stored in a in a FIFO buffer. What we see here on the right hand side is that when the transmit opportunity for node zero is there, node zero commits to this transmit opportunity. So it says, yes, I now have data to be sent. Yes, I want to use my transmit opportunity. If you remember the combination, it, uh, a commit is transmit enable uh, zero, transmit uh, error one, and then on the data line we have a zero, zero, one, one, four, three. And then, this is, of course, the transmit is also read on the receiving uh, lines of all the nodes. And then the uh, control finite state machines and data finite state machines, they change to transmit and receive state, uh, respectively, here on the right side. And of course, at some point, the frame comes to an end. Yeah, when we look at here at the upper MII of node zero, the Mac says, OK, now I'm done with my frame. And uh, it sets the transmit enable back to zero. And uh, also, there is no longer data coming through uh, the upper MII. <clears throat> However, as we were not able to send out the data right away, uh, but we had to store it in a FIFO buffer, in order to complete the frame, we now need to um, basically empty the FIFO buffer. And this is uh, what happens here. The data finite state machine that changes into a flush state and then the remaining data that is uh, in the FIFO buffer is sent out um, over, the, over the data line. And then, then the data transfer is finished. So we have sent an entire Ethernet frame. And then the normal uh, procedure continues. We have, we have a transmit opportunity for node 1. We have transmit opportunity for node 2, which is again yielded 3, 4. And then we have another beacon transmit opportunity for node zero, which is yielded again, and so forth. So I think we have already mentioned that uh, for 10 base T1S, there is nothing like a, a, f a physical collision on the bus. However, we can have something uh, which is called logical collision. And now we will look at a situation where we um, experience a logical collision. So the signals here on the left-hand side are more or less the same, without, uh, with one exception. Here at, uh, at the bottom, uh, we were looking at the receiving lines of node 2 of the lower layer MII. And now we look at the transmit lines here. Um, 
on the left hand side, it starts again um, with the recovery state. So that the master node observes the bus. If there is no activity, it sends out a beacon. Synchronization happens. And when we look again at the upper MII of node zero, there is no data that is sent. So the node zero yields its transmit opportunity. And then we have the transmit opportunity for uh, node one. And then we have the transmit opportunity for node two. And um, when we look here at, uh, at uh, the lower, lemma, lower layer MRI of the node two, you can see that it sends out here a comet. This is a comet, uh, so transmit enable zero, transmit error one, and then a three. This is a comet. So obviously node two has some data that is to be sent um, to, uh, to the bus. And it was fortunate enough uh, that the data was there uh, before the transmit opportunity arrives. So the node commits to the transmit opportunity and then starts transmitting. For the node uh, zero, uh, the node zero was not that fortunate. So basically it yielded its transmit opportunity here. It said, okay, I have nothing to send. And right after this, uh, some data was coming through the upper MRI. So the MAC of node zero said transmit enable to one, and data, then data came through the MII. And again, it was like uh, that the data that was coming through the upper MII is stored in the 5 queue in order to wait for the next transmit opportunity. There's only one problem here. This only works um, if no other node on the network uses its transmit opportunity until the transmit opportunity for the node we are considering arrives. So in other words, at the moment the node uh, two uses its transmit opportunity, we have a collision because we cannot hold the data in the FIFO buffer until the transmit opportunity for the node zero is there. And um, this is um, indicated here to the Mac by the data finite state machine. So you see here it's again in hold, and then it's changing into a collision state, and this collision here is indicated over the collision line to the MAC. And what we do now, what we do now is we need to wait until the MAC basically realizes that the collision is there and sets its transmit enable back to zero and stops the transmission. So here in this case, as I told you, we didn't do a implementation, real implementation of the MAC. We have a, a, basically an ideal MAC, which sets the transmit enable back to zero right away. <clears throat> and this is recognized by the data finite state machine and the collision, and the collision goes away for, for node zero. However, the carrier sense line, you need to observe the carrier sense line, this remains uh, busy. And this carrier sense line remains busy until the transmit opportunity for the node zero is there. So this we will see on the next slide. So we come to the end of the transmission for node two. So again, there was a little, little uh, some, some data in the FIFO buffer. This is sent out. And then we have the transmit opportunity for node um, three, node four, then we, again, we have a beacon, synchronization happens, and then we have the transmit opportunity for node zero. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, the carrier sense line is uh, held on one until the transmit opportunity for the node zero is there. And um, what we need to do, or rather the node needs to do is, we, the node needs to wait until uh, the MAC realizes this, that uh, the line is no longer busy, and then um, sets the transmit enable back to one and basically restarts the transmission we have seen before. So there is also a counter that observes that this doesn't take uh, too long. So this is a counter that can, that can be set. And here in this case, again, we have an ideal MAC. It realizes that here this line is going down and then basically instantly starts the transmission again. Yeah. So this 
those were, were two examples to give you a little bit an idea of what's going on um, uh, from a dynamic uh, point of view in the 10 base T1S system. And uh, now this is a little bit of a wrap up uh, in terms of uh, PLCA. So as we have seen, um, we have typically uh, one uh, transmit opportunity um, in each transmission cycle for each node on, um, on the bus. However, I think uh, in draft 2.3 of the standard, um, a burst mode was added uh, for 10 base T1S. So there is also the possibility to give a node the option to send more than one frame before uh, we have the transmit opportunity for the next node on the network. So in terms of uh, frame length, um, this can, the frame length can be like the minimal frame length of uh, 64 bytes and co can go up uh, to the maximum Ethernet frame length. But this is basically up to the system designer. Um, this is something uh, you need to think about when you design a system. <coughs> And this is one of the um, different parameters you can um, play with when you design a 10 base T1S um, system. And I think this is also something uh, we will talk about in the next um, point of this agenda point in the presentation when we look at uh, the system level perspective. Um, one thing I think uh, worth to mention is that in order to prevent um, um, a node to blocking the bus, there is also a Jabba function implemented uh, for 10 base T1S. If a transmission takes too much time, then it is basically interrupted by the node itself. And uh, the other nodes can continue uh, without this node bl uh, blocking the bus. So this was now the PLCA layer. And now we quickly look at the two lower layers of the phi here. So when the data is coming um, through the MII interface to the physical coding sublayers layer, um, the data is going through um, a shift register. And uh, you can see here, here are the bits coming in. And then they move here through the shift register. And um, then some uh, logical OR operations are done. And then the data is going out. And this is done to improve the EMC behavior and um, to have a, like an equal distribution of uh, zeros and one in the, in the data stream. Then the, 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 the bits that are going out here, out of the shift register, there is a 4-bit, 5-bit encoding done, uh, basically in order to have also some um, combinations available, for example, to indicate a beacon. So of course we need to have uh, combinations for the data, but then we have also some remaining combinations because we have now one bit more to indicate a beacon. So a beacon in five bit is, for example, a zero, one, a zero, zero, zero. And uh, when we look at uh, the physical medium attachment, um, and uh, we look at the signal uh, values on the line itself. This is done by a two-level differential Manchester encoding. 